I'm Becky Stackert. I'm an artist, and I worked with Judd on his story, and I've been with the Second Chances Committee for about five years. And I'm Judd Edwards, and I have been um, volunteering and a part of Blue Jacket in various capacities since 2013. And Chad, do you want to start talking about how you got involved with Blue Jacket? Yeah. Um, in 2010, I had a life journey change that brought me to a dark spot in my life that uh, put me behind bars for a number of years and um, uh, obviously changed the direction of my, my travel drastically. So um, from that point on, uh, I basically took a different path and had you know a lot of journeys that uh, um, I never imagined that I would be on, but uh, things happen for reasons and good things come from good changes in life. And so in 2013, I ended up um, coming out and as a mandatory program, I went through Blue Jacket. Once I graduated from Blue Jacket and I landed a job, I started volunteering back here due to the um, just the overwhelming um, good things that I was seeing that was coming from this program with different people here. And just uh, just how people's identity um, goes from being crushed to dirt level and then raised back up through this program. So I felt really um, compelled to volunteer here and, and uh, work with people in, in different ways and shapes and forms. And here it is 2021 and I'm still coming back. <laughs> And you are a Blue Jacket superstar. <laughs> it really um, is compelling to, to have the journey that I had and see things through a different lens that a lot of people don't understand. And so it does make you feel more passionate and motivated to um, just be a part of this in any way that you, that you can. What do you mean um, when you say, see things through a different lens? What are you talking about? I was telling you at the beginning of this a story, and I, and I like it because it's, it's, it's profound, but yet it's very simple. Is one day when I was, um, when I was still serving my time, um, I looked around at all the people that were in this facility at the given time. And uh, the majority of us had on jumpsuits and we were wearing you know, the, the outfit that you wear while you're in prison. And there were administrators that were in the room at the time and there were guards in the room at the time. And I remember thinking, if we were to all just switch clothes right now and some outsider were to walk into this facility, how would they view us? And the only way that they would view us is according to our clothes, not our character, not our personality, not our anything at all. They would view us by our clothes and they would make an assessment and a judgment of who we were simply by the clothes that we had on. And it was, it was really kind of an enlightening moment for me to, to, to look at life in that, that lens that you are so judged sometimes in your lives by just simply a name, uh, a, an appearance, uh, you know, just a, a, a thing without being known. And so that it's an important thing in life for, for, for people to recognize and realize that you need to, you need to be known for who you are. And one of the very first things that happened here when I was going through the program was that uh, we were asked a question by an instructor that said, you know, how many of you are felons? And we all raised our hands. And, and then he did that like two or three times and we were confused. Like, what do you, what do you, we all kept raising our hands. And, and what his point was, and again, this was a very profound moment, was is that none of you are felons. You may have a felony but you are not a felon. That's not how you identify yourself. You are not, you're a human being and you are, you know, you have a story and you have a personality and you have character. You can't be defined by a term that's given to you, you know, in, the, in that sense. And so th those kind of things, those moments that through this really shaped and molded a change in my life that, you know, at one time I could have very easily, well, I, I not could have, I did. I was one of those people judging. And I think I remember telling you the story about driving by uh, Allen County uh, lockup and just thinking about all the monsters behind that door, like all these bad people that are in there and all the bad things that they must have done. And when I found myself on the other side of that wall, um, it, it changes your perspective on things. So, and again, not everybody has that on their resume, so. <laughs> <laughs> I 
came to know Blue Jacket through ArtLink because Tony served on the board. And I wanted to be involved because I loved the idea of storytelling and the art. And then once I got to know the organization better, um, it, it struck an emotional chord with me because my mom was an addict and I had family members who um, had had some of the same struggles that um, some of the people that are served by Blue Jacket have. And one of the pieces that I made that relates to Judd's story um, relates to everyone's story. It's the piece with the mirror. And you know, it's this idea that when we look at other people, um, that especially with Blue Jacket, when we're coming in, we're looking at other people's stories, we're really looking at ourselves. And that it's a reflection of ourselves. So when we look at someone else, we're seeing ourselves. And also this idea that, you know, we're all one decision or one coincidence or, you know, one, um, you know, one step away from anybody else's path. And so what I love about um, being an artist with Blue Jacket um, is being able to tell those stories and being able to develop relationships with other people, you know, with the committee, which Jen is on the committee, so I got to know him that way, but then also with the people whose stories that we're telling. When I listened to your story, um, you know, I had no idea what I was going to make. But we sat down together a couple times and I just listened to your story and took it home and thought about it and I pulled out major themes. There's the nature theme, you know, because you have a great love of nature. You know, one of the pieces has a lock, a padlock in it, which relates to a story of yours from prison, which I enjoyed hearing about. And then also it has dates on it. So um, the dates when you were incarcerated. And then there's one that has words on it, and those were your father's words. And then the last one is a mirror, and it has the same kind of um, red and green color theme and then the nature theme. But the mirror relates to, you know, when we look at others, you know, we're, it's a reflection of ourselves. We're really looking at ourselves. And that, you know, we're all very close to one another. And it relates to what you're talking about. You know, we look at people and have certain assumptions based on, you know, if they're a felon or what they're, what they're wearing. And we do that to ourselves, too. So. The thing that I like the most about um, the whole Second Chance uh, art exhibit is, well, just like you, the same thing. I, I'm an artist also, and so I love the artwork. I do enjoy being able to share my story just to uh, maybe, maybe just change one person's perspective, maybe to lift one person's spirit, maybe to show a glimmer of hope to somebody that doesn't have hope. Um, so it's, it, I enjoy the, uh, the atmosphere and the, the, the storytelling that this whole event brings, and sometimes some really good food and music as well. <laughs>